Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about video game music, specifically Pokemon music, because I kind of want to try to branch out with something a little more different than just making music all the time and then that's basically all you see from me. I kind of do this stuff on streams already, like on Twitch. Uh, I stream every once in a blue moon when I'm able to find the time for it and people seem to enjoy it a lot so I kind of want to bring it to my YouTube channel as well. Uh, let's give this a try. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be ranking every single trainer battle theme that I can find from Pokemon, all from generations 1 through 9. And we're going to include the remakes because I feel like they should be ranked a little differently. Now, here's the thing, right? These are my own tastes. Obviously, there's no wrong or right answers. That doesn't mean that we can't banter back and forth and be like, hey, hey you're wrong. Like, I'm not going to take offense to that because, you know, it's all jokes. We're all just having fun. So without further ado, let's start listening together and see what we can come up with. All right, obviously, we're going to start off with Gen 1, and this is going to be like red, blue, and yellow and green. <laughs> There's a lot of things to a song that you can judge, like composition, arrangement, and also instrumentation. You can judge things like mixing and just how the song really sounds to your ear from like an audio standpoint. But honestly, Pokemon has been pretty consistent with that sort of thing, so I don't know if I could really judge on that. So one thing to note about the early Pokemon soundtracks is that they only have three channels for battle themes. The way that they were able to work around those limitations, I feel like is really cool. So um, that is something that I think kind of just adds merit to the music in general. I'm going to start off with red and blue being pretty middle of the road. Like, I think it's good. It doesn't blow my socks off, but it doesn't make me fall asleep either. So I feel like, good. All right, so let's jump into Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I really like this one, if I'm being honest. Um, I think it's definitely a step up from Red and Blue, mainly because it feels like they're doing more with the same limitations that they had in Pokemon Red and Blue. I don't know, like, do you think, like, I'm BSing you or something? Because I, I definitely feel like it it's an upgrade despite having the same exact limitations. Yeah, this is definitely great tier for me. Now, here's what makes things a little complicated. There is a Kanto Trainer arrangement in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, so I do wonder, do I rank that differently, or do I kind of just put it all within the same category? Oh, I really like this one. Yeah, man. Okay. We're gonna have to toss this up here in the great tier. It sounds great. <laughs> I do like it a lot. I know. Fantastic. I, I think it's... I, th I definitely think it's great. Um, let's take a listen to the Fire Red and Leaf Green version of the theme. I definitely find it to be a step up from the red and blue version. Um, I don't know if I'd put it in the same category as the gold and silvers though, but it's good. Like the instrumentation definitely brings out more of the composition because you know there's less limitations on the Game Boy Advance than there was on the Game Boy Color. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put it above the originals just a little bit, um, but within the same category because you know. We've heard this song so many times, it's been milked to death, so <laughs> that does kind of knock it down a little bit for me. But either way, I mean, it's good. There's, I don't really have any complaints about it. There's the Heart Gold and Soul Silver version of it. Yeah, I really love the Heart Gold and Soul Silver sound, uh, sound font. It's just such a good one. This is probably the best one so far. I believe they actually added this part. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, man. So they added a new section in the Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver version. I remember this now. Oh, man, this is great. Yeah, I know. This is... I think this is going into banger territory, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. This is such a good version. Okay. Let's go to the Let's Go... Pikachu and Eevee version. I'm so sorry you have to hear the same composition for the last, like, five, six times. I'm trying to get through all the Kanto versions because there's so many of them. So obviously, 
it's a good composition. I'm not taking that away from it. It's good. I wouldn't say it's worse than the first version, but it probably a nostalgic reason. I'm sure there's like some bias there, but it's just orchestral. I mean, it's great. It's neither here nor there, but yeah, pretty middle of the road for me. Now, apparently, I haven't actually beaten Pikachu and Eevee because apparently there's a versus Master Trainer version. I don't know what that is, but let's take a listen. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure the synths really add all that much to the song. I might just put it in the okay tier. Okay. <laughs> Now that we're finally out of the hell that is Kanto, let's go into the Heart Gold and Soul Silver version of Johto. Yeah, pretty solid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I meant to put it in here. I feel like uh, it's able to branch out just a little bit more um, because of the fact that, you know, there's no limitations like there were on the Game Boy Color. So, pretty good. I, I like this one a lot. Alright, now... Let's head on over to Hoenn. Uh, this is the region where I started, so let's take a listen. <laughs> oh man. Ah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> there's not much to say about it. I like this one a lot. I hate to say it, I don't think this one really moves me all that much uh, compared to the old one, and that's definitely some kind of like nostalgia bias. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's even like worse than the original or anything, but it doesn't really move me all that much. It, it's pretty adequate for a remake of uh, the original. So let's put it in the good tier. Alright, now let's move on to Sinnoh. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the great tier. Now, let's go to the remake version of this. Hmm. You know, I don't think this one's that bad. I do kind of like this one. That sounds about right to me. Now, the Legends Arceus arrangement. Okay. Interesting. Wow. What time signature is that? I'm genuinely unsure. Uh... So, composition-wise, this is crazy. It's technically it's just very impressive. Yeah, I think this is fantastic, Main, mainly because of, like, just how crazy they went with the time signatures. That is really cool. Okay, um, next. <sighs> okay, this one takes me back. I, I like it a lot. Um, I think it's great. Now, how great do I think it is? I might put it a little bit above Diamond and Pearls. Like, I think I like this one a little more. It's up there, it really is. Now there is a second version from Black 2 and White 2. Ah, oh, I forgot about this. This is where they kind of like varied up the bass line a little bit. Yeah, it seems like they like improved over it slightly by like varying up some parts. And you know what? I dig it. I, I think I'm gonna put it above Pokemon Black 1 and 2. Or sorry, <laughs> black and white one. Now there's another version called the Battle Subway version, and I remember loving this one when I was a kid. Let's take a listen again.
Oh, I love this. Yep. No, it still hits. Oh, the gated pads! Oh, this is so good! <laughs> I love this so much, actually. Oh, man. No, this is it. This might be a contender for the best. I love those gated pads, man. <laughs> it's so good. This hits. Okay, no, I gotta put it up here. Now, is it the best, though? Or is it, like, second best? I think I gotta put the battle subway up on top, like, the best of the best. This is probably my favorite so far. Wow. Alright, let's take a listen to X and Y. I have some good memories with this one, too. Um, when this game came out, I was around 16 years old. I do like this one, too. You know that snare sounds really nice. It's very, like, crisp and clean. I remember this part confusing me. Like, composition-wise. It just seems kind of random. <laughs> oh, and it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too... Eh. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, there's some really weird composition choices that I'm personally not too fond of. I mean, I've already pointed them out to you, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the okay tier. But, uh, yeah. Let's uh, continue on. Sun and Moon. This was when I was in my first uh, year of college. I think this is when this came out. It's fun. I think it's pretty good, honestly. Okay, yeah, it's pretty fun. I, I like it. Now, where do I put it, though? I might put it around here. Like, it's pretty middle of the road, middle of the road. I do like it, though. Now, apparently there's an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon version, which I don't know if I remember, but let's take a listen. Moving on. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't remember this battle theme at all. Moving on. <laughs> this is starting off sounding like a Super Mario boss theme. <laughs> God, that's so weird. <laughs> da, da, da. It legitimately just sounds like that one song in Mega Man. Uh, I think it's called Flash Man. Yeah. Cool. Obviously, it wasn't a reference. It was just kind of a funny coincidence in terms of composition. But anyway, uh, that seems to be it. I'm uh, surprisingly, this tier list doesn't have Scarlet and Violet in it yet. I guess this is an older one. Um, so I'm going to just use Pokemon Green as Scarlet and Violet, and I'm going to throw it around here. I think it's OK. Um, it's it's not like the like I said, it just doesn't blow me away. Um, but I definitely don't think it's boring. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is my tier list. Uh, feel free to send me death threats in the comments. No, but <laughs> obviously, you know, um, if you have any differences of your own and like what you would move things in your own tiers, uh, definitely, you know, talk about it in the comments. Let's, uh, I I'd love to see like other people's different perspectives. So obviously this doesn't mean that what I have is the objective truth. It kind of just adds fun to the discussion because, you know, something that I personally don't find very exciting could excite you and i think that's just really cool this was a lot of fun i'd love to try it again another time and hopefully i'll actually commit to doing that but uh we'll see thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video